Praise the Lord. It's always good to be in the house of the Lord. It's always good to praise Him and thank God for what He has done for you throughout the week, throughout the day, throughout the month, throughout your life. One of the things that uh, has it's really been on my heart is how much that God loves us. How precious we are in His sight. In Isaiah 43, in uh, uh, verses 2 to 4, it says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you. And this is from the Amplified Version. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned or scorched, nor will the flame kindle upon you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Your Savior. I give Ether to the Babylonians for your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba, a uh, province of Ethiopia in exchange for your release. And this is really the key. This is how God feels about us. Because you are precious in my sight. Think about that. That's how much God loves you. You are precious in my sight and honor because I love you. Hallelujah. I will give men in return for your life and people in exchange for your life. And think, just think about that part. To think about how precious you are. Think about your kids or your grandkids. You know, one of the, one of the really, the, the highlights uh, was when I uh, was there when my uh, first grandson was born and it was born in the same hospital that uh, a middle daughter was born at and to be able to hold that life and I remember looking back and holding her and seeing how precious that that little girl that grew up now got a son and now they you know the the kids are teenagers now you know and 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 you think about how precious that that God looks at us, you know, and, and every day we ought to get a perspective of God's love for us. You know, it seems like the last uh, last few days, you know, when you listen to a lot of popular songs or even some of the oldies, people sing a lot about love, you know, and they sing a lot about their feelings, but they really don't go deep enough when we think about God's love, you know, because God's love is so powerful and he holds on to us and he still loves us through everything, you know. You know, sometimes the kids, you know, it's all funny when you always see a new mom. You know, new moms, they, they're so funny compared to when they had three or four kids. Because that first kid, they're a nervous wreck all the time. You know, I remember when my oldest daughter, the, the little girl, she was just running, you know, and she fell. Oh, my poor, you know, she ran over there. Oh, poor. I said, you know, the kids are a lot tougher than you think they are. You know, they'll get up, you know, when babies start walking and they fall down. If you just kind of let them, they'll, they'll realize that they fall in there behind her and get back up and, you know, keep going. But it, it, it's so funny. And by the time they get to three or four kids, oh, they'll be fine. They'll jump off the coffee table or something. Oh, they'll be fine. They bump their head. They'll be fine. They'll, you know, go over there, you know. But you think about how that every single day God thinks about you. Yes. Can you imagine that? I'm always awed that the Creator wants to hear from me every single day. Yes. See, I, I teach school, and one thing about school, and I, I've been I've been in this field since 1976 driving trucks. The the one thing you never want to forget when you're teaching whatever subject you're teaching is never forget you were new once in that subject. You never want to forget that because you can. You do it for so long. Well, how come they not getting it? Realize they're starting. You know where you were all those years ago and your job is to be patient and bring them along yes. you know and that's what God does God understands what our where our hearts are you know you can't lie to God because he already knows what's in your heart you know he knows how you feel and the best people I've ever seen that have the relationship with God are those who can just fall in their place and cry out to God and be honest to God you know you know, sometimes they think we have to be so formal, but it's just God, you know, help me. God, I need you. You know, it's, it's not, sometimes we got to say these and thous and all that stuff. Sometimes that's all that, sometimes you can't even get words out. You know, you're, you're down that low, you just can't get words out. God, I need you. I need you to hear me. And one thing about, you know, one thing about heaven, 24 hours, seven days a week, you know, some places they close at five o'clock. That's it. You know, holidays are closed, closed down. Bad weather they might be closed down. But no matter what the circumstance, God is ready to listen to you. 
Think about it. The one that created the universe, all the universes, and told the stars. I'm always amazed. I look at the stars. I drove truck, and sometimes the night's so clear, and you look and you see the stars, and you think, wow, that creator, that created the stars and said, that star, you stay there until I tell you otherwise. Okay, you just stay there. I want earth here. Okay, I'm going to create man after our own image. Now think about that, how God created us after his image. He gave us two arms, right? Most have two arms so we can hug each other. And we can also, it's like, have you ever did almost like an air hug to God? Said, so this is how much I love you. Because that's the way Jesus died, right? He died like this. I always think that my mom used to do that. If I hadn't seen her, she'd come running at you like this. With her, I, I just thought this is such a vulnerable position to be in when you're running like this. But that's the way mom would do it. She was putting the laundry up on the line. I hadn't been home for a while. And I come driving up and she saw me. She put the laundry down and she came running, running like this. My son, I welcome you. I welcome you. And I just thought, mom, you know, I, I still think about it. She's been gone quite a few years. But that's how I looked in her sight. She thought I was precious. And think about the creator God that thinks you're that precious. Okay, uh, we're going to go ahead and take a prayer request and praises what God has done for you. Yes. I got a co worker uh, at work today. Uh, his dad went uh, down to see the PD off and on. But uh, today, uh, they, his systems were shutting down. In fact, a lot of support the last couple of days. And, and uh, his dad, Bill uh, Davis Sr., is the uh, guy who was a junior. A lot of people around him know him in the race circuit. More or less a legend around his parts. Uh, but it, uh, they decided today to take him off the system well, and uh, free the plot and pass away. Okay. And him up in the valley up. Okay. The corp is dead. Passed away. Okay. Someone else? Yeah. Well, I had a veteran that was 86 at work. Steve Bowers and I know in the country. His wife, I talked to him well, last week, last Friday, or the weekend. He was last, you know, on the minute that happened, I guess yesterday. He was a veteran of the 86, the guy I was waiting on. And of course, Jack and Jake heard that I didn't get a few funeral. I still wrote stuff on Facebook and still needs a lot. The lady uh, I just spent Christmas with every year for 20 or 30 years growing up, and he missed those. Yeah. And of course, a nominal, a nominal, prayer for Cheryl because she's not feeling her greatest, and like she's trying to get to where she's comfortable. Okay. Talk to Cheryl, but it's like on shine through the nails, which is hard to deal with. So it's gonna be a little. Yeah. Remember the Joe Sherry? They're doing good. They're living right now. It's just like such thing. Gotta find a different house. We're gonna stay with them for. Okay. We'll definitely, we'll definitely keep those prayer requests. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yep. We'll definitely do that. And you know, and I always, I always want to praise the Lord because there, there's one thing that I that I see in my life is that. God's never done with you. you know? he, he's always working. You know, he, he, he's always wanting to make you more like him. You know, and anything that's not like him, he want to deal with. Because you're a reflection of Christ. When you name your name, I, I remember I, I worked for um, uh, Walmart stores. I, I remember years ago, and they asked me to do a prayer. We had a, a Christmas dinner every year, a safety breakfast. And, and so... I remember they asked me one year to give up and pray over the breakfast. And I thought that first time that I did that, from then on, my identity was set, right? Because now I'm in front of, you know, this group. And, and you know denying now. You, you know, you, you, you're up in front, you expose yourself, and now you identify with Christ. And you're going to be identified with him for the remainder of your life. And I said, you know what? That's all right. And if, if I may indulge, I, I got to share this. I, I was sharing this with a friend, and some of you might have heard, but I was sharing it with a friend that one time we went to a, a, the Passion Play, and we end up getting late at Teenage Girls, but somehow that came back to me again 
that we got there and they took Jesus off the cross and, and they took him down and, and, and we was out, out of the sanctuary into a little, it was an open area. And I never forget that I sat on the end of this long pews like this and the risen Jesus, he was an actor, but something just never let go of me. So he came up and they had a director outside which just telling him, not come in yet. And this Jesus figure, he was dressing, this robe looked like it was glowing. And I remember, you know, I'm just sitting on the end and he turned toward me and gave me a little smile. And then he came over and he sat beside me. And I'm telling you what, I know it's a, I know it was an actor, but I'm telling you what, that changed me forever. You know, because he was just sitting there and he wanted to sit beside me, you know. And, and to spend time, and that little smile is like, you know what, you really do love me. You really do love me that much. And I never forgot that. When he was glorified, it was just like this, this actor, I don't know his name, but it's like he was just glowing. Like it wasn't like just an act. It was like he was just glowing that, that he got the opportunity to portray Jesus. And when he sat down beside me, man, it's like, that's it. That's where God wants to be. You know, he's a friend that sticks as close to a brother. He wants to be that, that in our life. He wants to be for us. You know, because sometimes some people kind of give the, you know, st someday they might like you and some days they might not. But God's love is so consistent and it's there every hour, every minute, every day. I can count on it. Because in this world, you got to be able to count on some things and to be able to count on God's love. I mean that it won't fade away. He said, I love you with an everlasting love. Right. And that's something we got to always count on. Amen. Okay. Amen. Hallelujah. Someone else. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That, that's a blessing. God has the right people uh, to help you. You know, and I appreciate all the saints willing to stick it out you know yeah. you know because in, 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 and pastor made it a good point i mean we think about other places in the world oh, yeah. where people are huddled together you know and just out maybe out in the tent or out in the open and they're still worshiping lord you know and they will people go to ball games let me tell you it's yeah. 15 below zero and they're still you know got their hats and rooting for their team mm -hmm. you know and and we can come to church and serve the Lord, even if it's not the best condition. Okay. Yes, yeah, someone. Yes. Yes. Can open those doors. Amen. God can open the door, the right door. Amen. You know, I always felt that because God knows where a person ought to be working because He's going to meet somebody. If He never went over there, might not meet them, and they might be waiting and praying. You know, like Cornelius and Peter waiting for somebody to show up and show them the way. So it makes a difference. Yes. Anyone else? Okay, let's go ahead and go to prayer, please. Oh. <clears throat> Father God, we want to thank you tonight. We want to thank you for being such a wonderful God. We want to thank you for uh, loving us. We want to thank you for these requests that have gone up tonight. And Father God, that you would be with Peter. Lord, that you know where he ought to be working at. You know how to open those doors Lord, you know how to provide for the family financially, emotionally. Just touch Peter from the top of his head to the sole of his feet that you would touch him. And Lord, be with Mike's co-worker that that, that that had passed away. And you know, we know that it's a, it's anytime there's a passing, it's still a difficult situation, Lord, that you would comfort that family. Lord, put your arms around every one of them. 
Lord, we ask you to be with uh, 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 James' uh, situation, the family, and the one that passed away, and, and, and Lord, be with Cheryl, and, 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 and just be with those members. Because you know, Lord, you know, it's always about you. It's always about you. And no situation that seems so difficult, maybe it's a passing or, or maybe it's a job or maybe it's a home situation. God, you are more than enough. You are more than able. Is there anything too hard for God? And we know what the answer is. There is nothing. Okay? Oh, oh how the Bible says, for with God, for with God, all things are possible. And that's what we're going to believe. Lord, we ask you to be with Pastor Nathan as he gets his eyes worked on, Lord, and, and, and just touch him, Lord. And, and, and we thank God for the, the eye doctors and the surgeons and, and those that worked on him. And Lord, we thank you for, for Toby and John and, and the Wyckoffs for being able to uh, get the furnace fixed. And we thank you for the saints willing to come out and be in that situation, Lord. And still, we're going to praise God. Still, we're going to lift up. Whether they have heat or no heat, whether they have air conditioning or no air conditioning, we're still going to come to praise because you are in this house. You are here. And wherever you're at, God, that is holy ground. Hallelujah. And that's what it's about. It's about standing before you. Because, Lord, without you, what could we do? Where would we be? Lord, you have done so many miracles in our life. And Lord, we ask you tonight to come and touch every soul here tonight. Touch every family, whatever needs they may have. Lord, that you would meet those needs. That Father God, that we just going to believe, Lord, that our prayers, they go far above this ceiling. They go all the way up to the throne room. They go up to you. And Lord, we ask you to dispatch those angels, hallelujah, that have come, that have come and work in those situations. Father God, Father God, we thank you for living inside us. Emmanuel, God with us. Lord, we thank you for being on our side. Hallelujah. Because we are on the right side when we serve you. Hallelujah. How much closer can you get when you live inside of us? Father God, we want to thank you today. We want to praise you today. We want to give you all the glory because you deserve the glory. In your wonderful, wonderful holy name, we pray amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Announcements. Uh, if you have a phone, uh, if you turn it on, vibrate and turn it down, we appreciate that. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, this Friday, Eastern Gate House of Prayer. So all who may come, January 12th. Uh, yeah, we're going to just gather, press in, press in to the Lord. Um, the Lord was uh, speaking to my heart the other night that uh, there's going to be a release of healing in this room uh, Friday night. The healing, I believe, not only physical healing, but when we're talking about job situations, uh, emotional healing, and other things, and restoration. God, God wants to get His kids ready. Hallelujah. He wants to get them totally ready. Um, I was watching uh, Roy Fields shooting uh, a live Facebook Live situation from uh, Asheville, North Carolina last night and within a hundred miles of my kids. And I, I, I put my kids' names on there and says, this is what I'm talking about. And they were in a room with about five, six hundred people or whatever, and Roy could not even minister in, in worship. This place was just a river of living water. These people Hallelujah. were just pouring out. The Holy Ghost was all over this place. The Lord is wanting to release out of people here. He just wants to let go. He's looking for hungry people. And uh, if the hungry people come, he will feed them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Okay. Winter Jam. Winter Jam, uh, 26th, Friday night. Uh, uh, the youth, uh, the youth group, I think, confirmed that at least two of the youth are going, maybe more. Mm -hmm. And then we get Jane and Peter and everybody to go. But, uh, in the next week or so, we'll coordinate on exactly how we're going to meet and gather so we're all together. And uh, adults, young adults, older young adults, and younger old adults um, will uh, get together and get this coordinated. Sounds good. Praise the Lord. Okay, um, Brother James, uh, would you come up and take the offering for us tonight, please?
Thank you. Be so kind to pray over it, please. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lord, for being there for us. Holy, 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 the Lord God Almighty. Father God, tonight we just continue to lift you up. Father God, you are so worthy of praise. The wonderful counselor, mighty God. Father God, <clears throat> Lord, it's as, as we come tonight to praise you, let us never forget where we came from. Never let us never ever forget what you've done for us. How you brought us up and out into that land of milk and honey. Father God, you are wonderful. You are mighty. You are with us. Promising your word, you never leave us or forsake us. Let us never forget that. In those dark times, realize you are still the light. Father God, we thank you for these words of worship, these words of praise that have went up to you. May they continue. In your holy, holy name, we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Give God a hand. Clap. Thanks so much for our worship team. We appreciate it. Anytime you can praise God. Hallelujah. It's an awesome time. Awesome time. You know, uh, w one thing I, I just, it just been on my heart today, yesterday, it's just really how much God loves us. I don't know, that's just, you know, a preacher once told me years ago when I started out, he always says, Tim, preach what's big in your heart. Preach what bigs in your heart. Now we kind of looked at the other verses, Isaiah 43, about being precious. But we looked that word up, being precious, of an object, substance, or a resource of great value. Think about that. God looks at us as great value, not to be wasted or treated carelessly. Carelessly. Sin and value, cherished, prize, adored. That's the way God looks at us. And Paul, and we're going we're gonna to turn, the main scripture tonight is going to be actually found in Romans 8. And it's a, it's, it's a common one, but let's look at Romans 8, uh, 37 to the end of the chapter. Romans 8, pretty common, but you know what? It's absolutely uh, one of the most powerful sections of scripture because it talks about how steadfast God's love is. And let's look at Romans 8. Chap, uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 37 to 39. Now, I'm, I'm reading out of the Amplified Version, so it'll be a little bit different. But in verse 37, it says, Yet amid, yet amid all these things we are more than conquerors and gain a surpassing victory through Him who loved us. Now, Paul, we understood how Paul's life was, how he started. He persecuted the church, and now he's preaching toward the church. Isn't that something? The one that persecuted the church, now he's talking about how good God is. Isn't that powerful? 
You know, because sometimes you meet people that, man, they were so far away from the Lord, but God got a hold of their heart. I remember this kid that was in school, and I, you know, I, I, I'm type, I'm not going to put up no bullies, but he was just kind of wanting just like to pick on you, you know? And I knew one thing, you know, you, you don't want to spend your whole life fighting people. So what you do, you start praying for them. See, once you have that inside of them, inside of you, that's what they need to stop doing what they're doing. So I kept praying and, and left. I didn't see him for a long time, but he kept kind of coming back to my mind. And one day he came to the church I was at, you know, and hallelujah. Guess what? God had touched his life. God had turned him around. You know, and to see the victory in one night, uh, when I moved up here, he come and picked me up and he says, Tim, you want to go to church with me tonight? And I'm thinking, man, I remember in high school, that was a father staying away from you, going to church, you know. But now to see he invited me to see him raise his hand to the Lord. That's what we're talking about. Redemption. We're talking about God cares about every single soul. You know, and, and Esther talked, you know, it, I love that scripture, having come to the kingdom at such a time as this. I always wonder, why are you born at this particular time? I always, I always, that always goes through my mind. You could have been born 1800s, could have been born 1700s, you know, you could have been born. But why this time? Because God had a purpose for your life at this time. See, there's some people in your group that, that you would meet, I probably won't get to see but they still need the light. I deal with truck drivers. I deal with students. So I understand those different things they go through. See, there's something, you know, people can argue different facts and they get everything, but they can't refute what happened to you because you know what happened to you. That's it. That's what Paul did so many times. You know, hey, I was on the road to Damascus and the light shone and I got knocked down. And, 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 and Jesus said, you know, he, see, Paul, he just think he was after the church. He did not realize he was actually attacking Jesus. You see, Paul, you don't understand. You're the one attacking me. That's what you're doing. Those are my people, my church. You're actually after me. You can't touch my kids and expect me not to do nothing, Paul. Now we're going to turn you around. You're going to go blind for three days. You ain't going to be able to see nothing. All right? Then old Barnabas prayed for him, right? You know? And, and, they, and they felt like, you always wonder what Paul was seeing in that time. I think he just kept seeing Jesus. You know, kept seeing Jesus. Hey, wait a minute, Paul. You know what you need to do now? Because isn't it funny that, that, that Paul's enthusiasm is, you know, he, he had this fire against God. You know what? God didn't take that away. He just turned it around. Paul had the same fire for God now. See, it's a big difference. Some of those talents we think God can turn around and use them for his good. You know, and, and we look at this here in, 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 in uh, Romans 8. Now, Paul, I love the way Paul talks. You know, Paul was not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He was not ashamed of the four kings, whoever it was. He was not ashamed. See, some people kind of back off a little bit. I remember being in a hobby down in Keokuk, Iowa, with my family one time. And, and this big, big group came in, a, a, a church group, family members. It was big. It was probably 20 members. So the hobby and the Del they put their tables together. And you know what I liked about it? Right in the midst of this, they didn't make a big public display. But all of them held hands and prayed. I thought that was powerful. They didn't draw attention to, to hey, this look what we're doing. But they all prayed in the midst of that. I thought that was so powerful. They all held, held hands because they weren't ashamed. You know, they weren't ashamed to say, thank you, Lord, for this meal. See, and that's what God wants. He wants those. And Paul understood, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it saw in, in, in Romans 8, 38, for I'm persuaded beyond doubt, I'm sure, again, I'm reading out an amplified version, that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things impending, or threatening, nor things to come, nor powers. See, we got to look at that. There, there's a lot in there. I'm persuaded. That's what we have to be right now. We have to be persuaded in our own mind who we believe in. Somebody asked me one time, says, Tim, are you a Christian? Or, and then what am I supposed to say? You know, I don't want to hem haw about it. Yeah, I'm a Christian. Somebody asked me one time, I said, are you a religious man? I said, no, I'm a spiritual man. That's what I told him. I'm not into religion. I'm into serving Jesus Christ. So There's a big difference because I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. I'll declare him because of what he's done for me. 
See, that, that's, where you, that's where you know it's real. When you're not ashamed, even because, well, Tim, you, you don't want to make a spectacle yourself. I tell you, I, I remember one person said to me, and sometimes, you know, you, you, you get discernment, you know what, when to say things and when to not say things. But sometimes you don't have a choice because that Holy Spirit, it's like saying, say it, say it. I, I remember one time he says, he's talking about his, he's talking about his grandma, grandma raised him. He says, Tim, you know what I think my grandma's uh, problem is? She believes in God too much. She believes in God too much. I had to say something. I said, I said, there's no way to believe in God too much. Huh? It's usually not enough. You can get more and more and more and more of him. You know, a lot of times, you know, people talk about the glass, whether it's half full, half empty on a perspective. I said, neither one of those makes any sense because you can always fill the glass back up. You know, <laughs> you fill it back up. Who says you can't fill it back up if it's half full, half empty? You know what? God's always about replenishing us. OK, we don't usually eat a meal once a week. Right. You know, we'd be pretty thin if we ate once a week. So how, how, how many, how often should we go to this book right here? More than once a week, right? To get full, to get Jesus said, talk about the bread of life. What's he talking about? The word, the word, the word. Get that in you. Let me tell you, those same songs we sang as a kid, you know, Jesus loves me, this I know. Let me tell you, you get that in them kids and in them dark times, I tell you what, that comes back. That comes back. I remember them old songs, you know, learning to lean on Jesus. We sing them old songs. Yeah, you know, we, and sometimes we just say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. I remember, I remember those people that would come down and pray. And I'll tell you what, it was no time limit. If church went to 2 o'clock in the afternoon, they went to 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Let me tell you, I tell you what, them, them older ladies, they need to be worn out because they'd be down there. But, you know, they didn't care. They'd be praying and praying and praying because they prayed to the change come. Yes. And we didn't have no air conditioning. You know? No. Remember that? We didn't have no air conditioning. And we didn't have pews, you know, we that had the padding on, so it's more comfortable now. Shoot, and they had and then had air they opened the windows up. A BB flyer a BB flatter, they thought you got Well, what's going on back there, man? You got all fired up. So we chased the bee out of here. That's what we back there. But but you know, they thought, well, what what's going on back there? But let me tell you, but when God gets hold of you. It's not about a bee, it's about the Holy Spirit inside of it. It's, a, it's that shire, fire shut up in your bones where you have to say something. There's a time you have to declare who you belong to. Hallelujah. He said, for I'm persuaded beyond doubt and sure, in verse 38, that neither death nor life nor angels nor principality nor things impending or threatening nor things that come nor power. Let me tell you, a lot of people get stuck right here. Oh, this is coming on me. Oh, this might happen to me. You ever know people like that? They worry about everything. Let me tell you. They worry about the past. They can't get to the future because they still worried about the past. You know, that's one. The Bible says, forget those things are behind. There's time to move forward. You know, Jesus is a present help right now. You know, the past, there's nothing. There, that's the thing about it. You can't go back and, and, and start over as a baby. You know, we, we think about that. Wouldn't it be nice to kind of go back and, and we have a fork in the road and now we're taking a different direction? And how do you know the other fork wasn't worse than when he was on? You know, you think that if, if you take a lot left turn or a right turn, you think Jesus is not still down the left row and he's not down the right row? How do you know that? If Jesus is walking with you, lives in you, he's going to still be with you. We got to always get that in our mind. No matter where we go on this journey, sometimes we, we act like that, that, that God is surprised what happens to us. How is he possibly surprised when he already knows? He knows what you're going through. I used to go over, and I like to tell the story because it was one of my favorite places I went to to pick up freight was F.W. and Fredders and Son, south of Detroit. And they made clay pots, and I love this. I love the owner was usually there was an old guy and we never had to count nothing but I always like kind of like stay sometime around the back and see 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 the part where they was loading because it was really interesting that they they never pre-packed we never had anything pre-loaded what they would do you back in the dock and they'd have these guys right at the conveyor belt and they and they'd inspect the clay pots right there and if it was good enough to go out they'd box it up and go in the truck if it wasn't they threw it in this big garbage bin and they'd break up and I thought, wow, that's, that, you know, that's pretty close because it's almost going on a truck. But if they had one crack in them, they wouldn't make it from Detroit all the way back down to Iowa. 
So what they do, so, I, so one day I was watching, I said, what do they do with all these cracked pots? So what they do, then the forklift guy comes and he takes them outside and they dump them in this big bed and it goes on a conveyor belt. And you can see all these broken pieces. You know what it did? It ran through the furnace again. That's all it did. It ran back inside another section of the building. It came out. They made it again. And they kept doing it until it got right enough to ship out. I said nothing was wasted. Nothing. Absolutely. So all those things that you've been going through, and you know, all those things that things may crack, oh, don't worry. God's making you again. God's keep working on you. Because see, God's not done with you yet. You know, Hemphill sang that song. It took, you know, a week to make the sun and the stars. And that song back in the, that was back in the 70s, 80s, when they sang that song. You know, he, he took a week just to do that. But he's still working on me, see. He's not done with me yet. We got a lot of life. People think, well, let's take a look at Moses, you know. For the first 40 years, you know, he, he had three, basically three 40-year sections, right? And you remember <clears throat> when, when he got run out, he had to go out of Egypt because they, they was going to try to kill him because he, he killed Egypt. So he's in the wilderness. I'm telling you, old Moses had to be thinking some stuff. You know, man, man, it's 10 years out here. 10 years. Now he's on the backside of the desert. He don't have the luxury. You know, he's in luxury there in Egypt. He don't have that. He's about there tending sheep. 10 years. A whole decade goes by. Where is God? You sure Moses probably had some questions? Second decade goes by. 20 years? <clears throat> Wait a minute. You know, my mom used to tell me that God had a plan for my life. 20 years. Where are you at, God? I'm sure he had some questions. 30 years. Oh, man. Now we're getting a long time, man. I don't know. Does God still love me? God still care? But you know what? There's people praying for him, you bet. And what happened that 40th year? 40th year. God hadn't forgotten. God was working on him. I'm sure Moses had questions. You know, Moses, you know what? You try to deliver Egypt by your hand. It don't work. You got to go through me. See? I have to get that stuff out of you. You can't do it by your power. It's not by your might. It's by my power, saith the Lord. That's who it's by. And he saw the burning bush. And I love what the Bible says. He turned aside. See, I love that. I'm going to turn aside. You know? And see why this bush isn't burned up. God got his attention. Hey, what did we take? You know what? You're standing on holy ground. Why? Because I'm here. Wherever God is, is holy ground. Whether it's at your work, <clears throat> whether it's at your home, <clears throat> it's holy ground. Now think about that. So those things that we look on, well, I don't have the money. I, I can't do this. I can't do that. We need to take can out of our vocabulary. You know, <clears throat> I had a person one day and they, they was talking about fail, failure, you know. And, and, and I said, you know, let's take a look at this. Somebody put on uh, Facebook one time, fail meant F, you know, F-A-I-L meant first attempt in learning. I thought that was good. <clears throat> first attempt in learning. Babe Ruth. I love Babe Ruth. I, I think what he said, and I know I said it before, but I think what I love about Babe Ruth, he said this. He had the, he had the most home runs for years and years until Hank Aaron broke his record. Right? He's the first one to break it. But he also had the strikeout record for years and years and years. You know what he said? The fear of striking out doesn't keep me from swinging. I love that. And Babe Ruth was a big guy, right? So he wasn't going to make a living stealing bases, let me tell you. You know, he, he just wasn't going to do that. Because, you know, he kind of run, you kind of run like this, you know, he kind of choppy steps. But you know what? I love it when he pointed that bat. Or he pointed up here. That's where that ball's going. And when he swang, let me tell you, he planned on hitting out of the park every time. So when you get up there, keep swinging. And that's really what God wants us to do is keep going at it, keep going at it, keep going at it. That's how you get to know God. He, he wants people that say, hey, you know what? We're still going to go for you, God, no matter if anybody else. That's what Caleb, you remember Caleb and Joshua, when they got, they, they went in the, in, in, the, in the promised land to seek it out, you know, and, and the 12, only two came back and had a positive report. Only two, and they was the only two that went in there. You know, it's Caleb and Joshua. You know, so uh, the rest of them, I don't know, man. You know, I mean, when, when you have grapes the size of basketball, they got a promised land. They they look at us, but that we we you know they they look at us like we're we're grasshoppers before them. They got giants over there. We can't do. Well, who do you think brought them out of Egypt? Mm -hmm. Who do you think? It's like it's it's really always amazing. When God delivers us and does something good, it's like when the next crisis hits, we sometimes forget that. 
Can you imagine all the, you know, it could have been a million and a half of how many people and their animals, they came across the Red Sea. Think about it. On dry land, the donkeys, the, the, you know, every, you know, dry land, the carts and everything. And then when everybody got across, all of them got across, every single one of them. You know, some was old and young. And then they saw the waters close up. And they saw the miracles in Egypt. Now, if God got them across the Red Sea, what makes you think he wasn't going to take care of them? He brought them out there, right? Well, the first hard prime, it's like they're, they're marrying them, they're all dancing, the horse and rider thrown the sea, and everybody's all happy, you know. Hey, God, and what happened? The next time, now we're out of water. They go to tomorrow, bitterness, you know, they call it bitterness. I don't have any water. Really? Wait a minute. You just came through the Red Sea. God just delivered. You think he's not going to put you to a place that he can take and get water and feed you? You know, who are, you, who are you believing in? But what they looked at, you know, they saw the Egyptians coming out. They saw all these things and they seemed to forget. Wait a minute. You know, hey, we don't have this seat. We'd rather go back. Let's, let's get a, some captains up and go back to Egypt. Don't you realize in Egypt you were slaves? They seemed to forget all that. But when we ate by the flesh, when we ate that, don't you forget what you were back in them days. Now you're free to serve God out here. Serve Him. Come on. Uh, verse 39. I'm going to go back and finish 38. Nor things impending, threatenings, nor things that come, not powers. Now, nor height, verse 39, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation. Now think about that. Anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. There's nothing in all the creation. Amen. You know, we think about, well, the taxes, and we think about this, we think about, there's nothing separate you from God. Don't ever forget that. There's nothing. You know, well, I don't have this, I don't have that. But when you have God, you have everything. Amen. You have everything you need right there. It's in Him. That's what Paul was saying. Nor height, nor depth, nor how high you go, nor how low you go, nor anything else in all creation, we're able to separate us from the love of God. That's how much God loves us, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And I want to share this, this, uh, this words of this song at the end. And uh, let's see if we can pull it up here. I can only imagine that song. I just think I think I think it's just a great song. I had it up here. There it is. I just I just love the words of this song. I, it, it's just something that's on my heart. Y'all y'all probably heard this song, okay? But I can only imagine my mercy me. Now 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 think about it. This, this is where it gets real. These are the lyrics. I can only imagine what it would be like when I walk by your side. Isn't that something? You know, people said, I like to live in Jesus' day. That, that, would have, that would have been incredible to walk beside. But when he lives inside of you, how much closer can you get? Right? He said, when I walk by your side, I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. To think about seeing God face to face and thinking. That's why the elders just fell down and worshiped him. He's so holy. Just think about it. And when your face before me, I can only imagine. Get a glimpse of God. I can only imagine. Hallelujah. Surrounded by your glory. When you don't need lights up there because His glory illuminates everything. Yeah. Hallelujah. What will my heart feel? Think about that. Think about that. What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus, or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence, or to my knees will I fall? I tell you what, to come a holy God, we can't measure up. Hallelujah to his holiness. Think about it. You know, he, he can't look, about, but he can look through his son, right? God can look through his son because that's who he's looking at. Okay? Will I stand in your presence or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? You bet. We're going to be singing hallelujah. We're going to be praising him. Will I be able to speak at all? Sometimes God does something so wonderful you can't even say nothing. You just know it was God. Absolutely you just know it was him. Hallelujah. I can only imagine. I can only imagine. I can only imagine when that day comes, when I find myself standing in the sun. I can only imagine when all I would do, hallelujah, when all I would do is forever, forever worship you. God's worthy of that. Forever worship you. That, that is awesome. 
I can only imagine. I can only imagine. Hallelujah. You know, surrounded by your glory. You know, think about heaven and all the people that's up there that wants to be there. They want to serve God. They want to worship God. You know, I, I think about a brother that I never got to see because he passed me as a little kid. A little, he, he lived a short time. But to see him up for worship, a mom that's gone on, your friends has gone on. You say, you know what? You know what we're going to do for eternity? We're going to worship God. So what we ought to do is start down here and worship God. Okay? Start here. So when we go up there, it'll just keep going and going and going. You know? Some people do it, would talk about God's rocking chair. I remember saying that. And I, I had just like, you, sometimes you get a vision of things. It's like people just lining up. Just like, like mom, you know, your mom is just rocking in your arms. And the Bible says, Zephaniah, he rejoices over her singing. I just got a picture. It's like holding you. You know, this is how much I love you. I died for you. I died for you. And the only thing, I, I just feel the cry of Jesus' heart when he was down here. And it's still the cry of day. Just believe me. Just, oh, I love you that much. Just believe me. You know, I got your best interest. Just believe me. That's the cry of God's heart all the time. That he sent his only begotten son for us. Just believe me. Tell you what. Never seen. My, my life verse is Psalm 37, 25. And I'll end with this. David said, I was young, but now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken or seed begging bread. David was 70 years old. So during that time, good times, bad times, I've never seen. Not one time seen a righteous forsaken or a seed begging bread. Not one time in that whole span. Oh, Father God, we thank you tonight because you are God. That's why we want to thank you. And that's enough right there. Just because you are God, you are so worthy. Yes, Father God, we thank you tonight that, Lord, no matter what situation may come, you're going to be with us. Yes, Lord. Father God, that you're not going to leave us or forsake us. You love us with an everlasting love. Hallelujah. And it's all about you. The Bible says in the beginning, God, you were there in the beginning. In Revelation, it talks about you're the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. Hallelujah. You're there through it all. And Lord, let us hearts not be troubled. Why? Because you are there. Yes, Lord. Father God, we thank you tonight. We praise you tonight. Father God, that you are so good. Lord, I ask you to put your arms around each and every one of us. Lord, as, as we go from this building, you watch over as, as the weather seems to come in. But you're more in control of that, Lord. Hallelujah. You can allow everybody to get home safely. Father God, we thank you for being a loving God. We thank you for being a kind God. We thank you for being a gracious God. And Father God, we thank you most of all for loving us. We want to give you the praise. We want to give you the glory. In your wonderful holy name, we pray amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand. All right. Praise the Lord. You are dismissed. Praise the Lord.